Hello, I'd like to give you an introduction to Gmail. To get to Gmail, first sign in to your college account by clicking on the sign in button at google.com. After you've logged in, you'll see a mail link up in the top right. Keep in mind that this actually isn't going to show up for you until after we've switched over mail systems, but for the time being, we'll just pretend like you have it. Go ahead and click on it. So the first place you're brought into is what's called your inbox. Now over here on the left, these are called labels inside Gmail. You might know them as folders in other mail systems, like GroupWise. At the very top, you have your inbox. This is where your new email will come in at. Underneath inbox, you'll have starred. Now you can put a star on any email to make it show up under that. It's a way of setting your favorites. Your sent mail is underneath that. Drafts, otherwise known as work in progress. This is a place where if you start typing an email but you don't finish it, it'll wind up in here. Also, any emails that you're currently working and typing on but haven't sent yet, it'll automatically save copies of them in here for you. And as soon as you send the email, it'll disappear. Underneath that, you'll have access to more. Clicking on more brings up more labels. Underneath that, you'll have important. Important will be important communications that have come in. You'll have chats, which ties into Google Hangouts, which is also listed out down here at the bottom. Under that, you'll have all mail. Now this would be your archive. So any items that you have archived from your inbox would go in here. Underneath that, you'll have spam. This will be any messages that Google has flagged as being potentially unwanted or just flat out malicious. There is a chance that some legitimate emails will actually wind up in your spam as well. So make sure to check it from time to time if you're expecting an email that you haven't seen. This will be a spot to keep an eye on, especially right after our transition from GroupWise to Gmail, as some of your external communications may initially fall into here. And underneath that, you have your trash. Now your trash is any items you have deleted. After 30 days, they're automatically removed out of here. You have the option of adding additional labels to be able to filter your email messages. Let's create a label now. Go to Create New Label. This brings up the dialog box for creating a new label. If we wanted to create this label underneath a different label, we could check this box and select where we want it to go at. Since this is our first one we're creating, there's none available right now. So we'll go ahead and hit Create. So our label was successfully created. Now we're going to find it up here on our sidebar now. We have some options now. We can apply label colors. We can choose if we want this label to show in certain circumstances, like if we have a new email waiting for us. Same thing for the messages list. We can also edit the label name, remove it, or we can go ahead and add a sub-label. We'll call this new label 2017. Since we've selected to create a sub-label, this is automatically checked for us. But if we change our mind, it's pretty easy to uncheck that box. And if we had different labels, we could also assign it here. So we'll go ahead and create this sub-label. Now we'll see a small arrow appear out here next to test. If we had any emails that were new that came in and filtered into 2017 under test, this would automatically pop out for us in bold and let us know how many new emails were waiting for us. Labels are a new way of thinking about folder structure. So whereas before we have folders and subfolders with labels, we can apply these labels to different messages. So for one message, we could put multiple labels on it, which means that email would be filtered and sorted into several different categories if we so choose. New emails come in on the top. They have timestamps listed out here on the right. To open an email, click anywhere along this row. So here we see this email came from our coworker, Derek. Hovering over someone's name brings up their contact card. From here, we could add this person to our favorites contacts. Right now he's listed in our directory. We could click the emails button to sort a view of all emails we've had with Derek. We could start a video call with Derek right from here. We could also send a chat message through Hangouts. Or we could select this icon to send him a brand new email. For now, let's read what he said. So it looks like Eric's wanting to know if we're free on Friday at 7 p.m. to go over our department review. If I hover over the date or time, it gets me a quick look at my calendar, and I can see that I don't have anything planned for that time frame. So I can go ahead and with the click of a button, I'll add it to my calendar. 
I have the option of going in and editing that event now if I wanted to, but it's okay for now. Since I've already added it to my calendar, I'll let Derek know that that works for me. Right here at the bottom, I have the option of just clicking inside of here to send a reply, which is what the default option is. I could choose reply to all if there were multiple people on this email, or I could forward this email to somebody else. I also have these options up underneath the more menu here on the right. The big arrow also means reply, but underneath more, I have lots of other options I can do. For now, we'll go ahead and we'll reply to this message. And that looks good to me. We'll go ahead and we'll send off that reply. We can click send here if we wanted to insert anything else in this email, like an attachment, something from our Google Drive, maybe a photo, a link to somewhere, or even just a fun emoji. We can do that. Looks great. We'll go ahead and we'll send that off. Google lets us know that our message has been sent. If we're done with this message thread, we could go ahead and we could archive it up here at the top. Keep in mind that if I've archived this message, but they reply to it, then it will bring it back up into my inbox, so that way I can respond to it. We could select the back button to go back to our inbox if we wanted to, or click right here on the left. If this message was actually spam and not someone that we wanted to communicate with, we could flag it right here. We could delete this message if we were all done with it, we have unlimited space, so that's really not necessary. We could also move this to a specific label. Since we don't have any labels that really match what we're looking for here, we could create a new one. That looks great. We'll go ahead and create that. Google lets us know at the top that it's moved that email chain to the Astrobiology Department Communications label that we've got right over here. Now if we click on it, it'll show us any messages that are in here. Any messages that we've viewed get a little bit of a darker shade to them to let us know that they've been read. If we wanted to, we could check this email chain. We could add additional labels to it if we wanted, or we could select under more to do some other things with it if we wanted to. We could set a filter, which means that any messages that come in that mention the word astrobiology could go into this label. So we'll go ahead and remove this name We'll add in the subject field astrobiology. We'll click on create with this search. And let's apply the label and we'll choose astrobiology. And before we click create filter, let's also check it to matching conversations. And there we go, the filter's created. Now any new messages that come in with the subject line of astrobiology will automatically get filtered into this astrobiology department communications label. Looks like we had another email come through. Before we check that email, let's get rid of these two automatic messages that'll come through to everyone's inbox when you first check it. You can remove it in a couple ways without even going in the email. The first one is to go ahead and click on these lines here that are on the left side. From here, you can move the conversation. We'll go ahead and we'll move it to the trash. Alternatively, we can check the box and we can choose to either archive or to delete these. There we go, that cleans it up pretty good. Now let's check this message from Muhammad. So he's looking for an invoice that we might have. We can reply by clicking inside of the box. Since I know that I have this file in my Google Drive, I'm gonna go ahead and click this icon to open it up. Sure enough, here's the file right here in our Google Drive. I could also search for it if it wasn't very apparent. I'll check it and I'll insert it. I can either insert it as a drive link, which will grant Mohammed access to read this file, or I can just include it as an attachment. For now, I'll just include it as an attachment. Oh, looks like I misspelled a word. We'll go ahead and right click and check it just like that. We'll go ahead and we'll send off this email. So here we can see that we attached th this as a reply to the email we sent back to him. Oh, looks like we got another email. Let's go back to our inbox. It looks like this email came from someone that speaks Spanish. We can translate this message by clicking on translate this message. Google automatically detects that this message was written in Spanish. And with the click of a button, it can translate it for us. We have the option to always translate emails that come in in Spanish or in another language as well. Inside of Gmail, we have lots of different settings and options that we have to customize our interface 
as well as to make it our own. Under the gear icon in the top right, you'll find some settings that we can use to configure our inbox. I'll go ahead and I'll check a couple of these things that'll help filter messages automatically for us. These tabs that it adds across the top will automatically filter in messages that meet the specific criteria that it's looking for. These happen automatically. As new emails come in, we'll see it notify us on these different tabs. Also under settings, we have themes. Themes is a fun way to make your Gmail experience your own. You can select from as many images as you can imagine, as well as pre-formatted themes and even if you wanted to, you could select a random image every time you open up your Gmail box. I kind of like the look of this mountain, so I'll go ahead and choose that one. Click on Save, and there we go. I find this one kind of hard to read, so I'll go ahead and I'll choose a different one. And it's really as simple as that. You can select background images from your own photos, whether locally on your computer, your Google Drive, or in your Google Photos. Oh, looks like we had a Hangout message come through from Muhammad. He's wondering if we've seen his sapler. If we wanted to from here, we have the option of launching into full Hangouts mode, to do a video call, we can add another person to create a group chat real quick, or some other settings options under here as well. I can even send some emojis as well. We can choose the pop-out option to turn this chat message into its own window tab. We could minimize it for right now, or we can safely exit it. Our chat is saved over here, and we can click on it any time to reopen that back up. Also under settings, we have the option of doing all sorts of fun things. We can change our presets for text and email messages. We can even set up an undo send which sets a cancellation period before it actually sends an email, in case we actually hit send too quickly. I'll set mine to 30 seconds. I could give myself some additional options for starring, and I can even set some desktop notifications. I've been getting some new messages, but it's hard to know when I have a new one if it doesn't notify me. I'll go ahead and check for when a new mail comes in, it should notify me. Keep in mind, this does require you to have Gmail open inside of your Chrome web browser. Whether it's your primary one that you're at, or it's even minimized on the desktop, it doesn't matter. As long as it's open, the notification will come through. Under here, I can create myself my own signature, and down here at the bottom, I can set up a vacation response. Up here on my tabs, I have labels. Here's where I created the ones from today. I can choose which of the system labels show and which ones are hidden automatically on my sidebar in this area. Also under categories, I can choose which tabs across the top of my inbox I want to show or hide from here. In my inbox, this is where I can further customize how I want things to look and act. Under accounts, here's where I can delegate access to my account to somebody else inside the organization. If someone else has granted me access to their account, I'll be able to see it in here as well. If I've blocked any addresses, they'll show up under here as well. At the top, I have the option to install Gmail offline. This puts a web app on my computer that allows me to check my Gmail even when I'm not connected to the internet. This is a very useful tool if you travel a lot. Now here in the inbox, you see we've got a new message underneath our updates. This didn't notify us because it saw it as a low priority. Our coworker Robert is granting us proxy access into his email account. I've gone ahead and I've confirmed with Robert that he intended to send this to me. So we'll go ahead and we'll accept it. And we'll confirm. It lets us know that it might take up to 30 minutes for the verification to complete, but once it's done, then we'll have delegation access to his account. We can go ahead and we can close out of this. Once delegation comes through, we can check Robert's email account by clicking on our picture up on the top right, and we'll see his account listed under here, and we'll say delegated. Let's go into it now. It'll load up his inbox, and we get a very limited look, but we can see the basic messages that he's been sending, drafts as well. We can send email from here as Robert, which we'll do that right now. 
we'll go ahead and send this email to myself. And we'll go ahead and we'll send that. Now we'll go ahead and check our inbox again. And here we go. Here's the email back. When you send an email as someone else, it does let people know that it was sent by someone else who had delegation access on behalf of that person. One other thing I want to show you is under spam. Looks like we got a new message. Oh, looks like someone got a secure file from Dropbox. I don't really believe that. Neither does Google. As you see, it notifies us here to let us know to be careful. It contains a suspicious link that was used to steal people's personal information. This text right here used to contain a link. As you can see, it's been disabled. I can click all I want and nothing happens. So Google's gone ahead and flagged this as a suspicious email, and so it's disabled any links inside of it. If this was a legitimate email, and we can confirm that, we can always flag this to say it's not spam. If we do that, it comes back to our inbox. And that link comes back. Now since I know that that's actually a malicious spam email, I'm going to go ahead and uh, report it as spam. So there you have it. This has been a sneak peek of Gmail for Columbia Gorge Community College. The transition between GroupWise and Gmail is scheduled to take place first part of January, so just after the winter break. Until that time, you will not see a mail link up in the top right corner when you log into Google. But after our switch, that will show up for you. Um, if you check the description down below, there will be contact information for me as well as some helpful links. That should help you out with any additional questions that you might have. So thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.